Hey, how's everybody doing today? Glad to have you with us today. We got a lot to do, uh, a lot of work. Uh, Steve gave us the hashtag challenge of a sphere with no jig. That's my first one that I've ever done that did not have a, a point on each end. <laughs> They're usually oblong. Um, I gave this to my wife after I got it uh, kind of halfway finished. I said, feel on that for a minute. She took it and she just rubbed and rubbed and rubbed. And she was uh, pretty complimentary. She said, that's, that's pretty round. <laughs> and it is. It, it feels great. I've never been able to do it. But it's a different method of turning than I've ever, not a, I've done this method of turning, but not to do a spear before. And so uh, I'm going to show it to you. Maybe it's for you. Maybe it's not. But it's just different. So I'll, let me put that one aside. And uh, bring in my partners in crime for here, here for just a second. There we go. Hey, Ruby. Hey, Wayne. Hello, everyone. Guys. Good evening. They're going to try to keep us all straight in the chat. And uh, I don't know about great... that. We'll probably, <laughs> we'll probably lead them astray, won't we, Wayne? Well, I've, I, I, uh, now, I have already seen one comment mention pancakes, so food is going to come into this at some point tonight. <laughs> well, it's Pancake Tuesday. You have of to mention pancakes, yeah, and you yeah. have well, to use real maple syrup. And I, well, I, I, oh, no, no, no I've, I've got to say, I, uh, for Jane's uh, dinner tonight, I did savory pancakes with uh, bacon wow. and cheese. There you go. There you go. Here it's known. Uh, we don't know it as Pancake Tuesday. We know it as Fat Tuesday, which is the day before Ash Wednesday, which starts Lent. So anyway. That's right. Uh, that, 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 now, that is exactly the same over here. We call it Shrove Tuesday, which yeah, is the day do, before. We do, too. I was trying to think of the term Shrove. Yeah. Okay. And that is the uh, the day before the. Um, I was going to say starvation, but that's not the right word. <laughs> <laughs> it almost <Yes>. did. <laughs> <laughs> All right. For six weeks. This, for six weeks, anyway. Six weeks. Okay. This is a piece of a cherry. It was a chunk that I picked up along the way somewhere. It's got a bit of nastiness right in there. But that edge, I'm hoping all that's going to go away. If not, uh, we may end up with just a little bit, but it won't be too terrible bad. Now, most people would take and put this between centers like this or like that or, you know, some way where it was square. I'm going to go on the bias uh, like we're doing a three wing um, uh, bowl or, or box or what have you. Uh, Ooh, this that's one's going to go. Yeah, it's different. And, and, I've done this before. I've turned three wing bowls before. Excuse me, just have a second. I'm trying to drive that point right dead in the center. I'm not quite getting it. Anyway, um, I've done the three wing bowls before. I've even turned a box starting this way. That's a lot of fun. But then I saw Clint at Wood Dancers. He did a, a sphere like this. And I thought, wow, that's that's something I've never seen before. So I tried it. Me neither. Yeah, I tried it. In fact, I sent him a message. I said, anything that uh, that looks like it makes it a little easier, uh, anything I need to know? He said, no. He said, just it's straightforward. Um, I didn't get that exactly centered, but that's okay. This isn't like the, the bowls where you really want everything square and center and all that fun stuff. So, Actually, right. I have uh, I have a drive center and a live center that were sent to me that a fellow yes. 3D printed just for holding uh, cubes like that. Right. Um, uh, 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 Rubber Chucky makes some as well, a, a drive center and a live center that have little triangle things that stick out and come over all these sides so it's held all the way around but here i'm just going straight into the spindle on this end that big opening that's there and then using my my uh live center with just the uh three what is it three quarter 16 or something uh threads exposed and has that little little uh point in the center but that's what we got going we're going to start with it looking kind of crazy at first start off kind of slow and uh now that I'm at this point, I'm going to be quiet a minute and let uh, one of these two share who all's in the chat with us. Well, that's oh. probably going to be me. That's probably going to be me because Ruby tends to like my accent. 
Absolutely. <laughs> if, if, it, if, if I were the one doing all of that, Wayne, the audience would be sound asleep and nobody, and Doug would probably <laughs> fall asleep. Nah. Okay, here we go. We've got Ronald Todd in and he's already said, don't forget the thumbs up. We've got Gerard in. We've got Andy Door 60 in. Obviously, Ruby's here. Oh, that's better. Your camera came back on. Uh, Roger Wallam is here. Uh, Gerard has said um, he did um, pancake, maple syrup, cream, and slightly reheated in the microwave. Uh, Fred Gilliver's here. Alex Wurzel is here. Jim Selby. Going down, Mike Evans, Woodworm Paul, Paul Heaton, and Dale, Old Man River is here. Good evening, Dale. Roger Kent. Still going down. I better jumps in a minute. Barry Chitty's in, Vinnie Charlton, and Rob from Clingspore. Evening, Rob. Hey, uh, Todd, Todd of Glen Cove. Piece of that bad part falling out there. Got jammed in. Susie's in. Hey, Susie. Oh, Mark's here. Evening, Mark. Hey, Mark. If anybody is down, I've, I've got to see it. If anybody is down in sort of the, the North Devon area and uh, wants to go and see Mark, he is now got a, a pop-up shop in the workshop with some of his uh, pieces are he's turned all the cling spore stuff on um on display as well and it looks pretty cool and he's also carrying the uh the new inserts for handles that's that, right uh, he's, he's also he's also doing the new inserts for the um the handle inserts that that pete's done I'm just trying to get a, a little bit of Clint, a oh it has clean Clint's in as well. Trying to get just a little bit of a clean area all the way around. I'm it's I'm I'm all the way around, but it, it bounces back and forth. I'm trying to get where it's just one nice area and then we'll start curving around. Oh, okay. And Rob from Copper Ellis here. James Crawford. Uh, oh, Healy's in. Even Healy. Uh, Thomas Kenny. Uh, Walt Y. Brew. That's a new everybody, name. Welcome, Walt. Yeah, everybody talks a lot in the chat, don't they? Oh, Ward's in. Even Ward. <laughs> and Roy's in as well. Good evening, Roy. How are you? And the professor's in as well. Hey, everybody. Andy, the Valley Woodturner's in, and he says that Lucy will be in later as she's gone shopping. Uh, what? She's gone shopping when Doug's live? That, that's absolutely terrible. I'll have to have words. Yeah, um, I, agree. And, I agree. Yeah, and I'll, um, Andrew, AGK, is in as well. Even Andrew. Precious. All right, I've got a nice, nice uh, area all the way around. And one of the neat things is, it, it's not there all the time, and it's probably because of my lights. Uh, but every once in a while, I'm getting a, a bit of a ghost shadow of a sphere going across, and that is that's pretty nice that it, it yeah, tries to show that. itself to you. Yeah, I can see that. T um, TLF Woodworks. Oh, sorry, TLF Works is in. And I think Zed's here as well. All right. Hey, Zed. Now, where am I up to? Yeah, Zed is in. Who else is here? Martin Ford is in as well. 
I'm getting towards the bottom now. And Marcus said that they had pancakes with sugar and lemon because that's the way we always used to have pancakes and coconut and mango ice cream. Oh, very nice, Mark. Sounds great. Does sound good. I'm afraid in Canada we just rely rely on our maple syrup. <laughs> no, the, the, when I was a kid, uh, it always used to be uh, lemon lemon juice and sugar, and then obviously the the French do the the crepes, and they do a lot of savory stuff. So um, I think the the sweetest thing. Um, or the sweetest pancake that I did for Jane was uh, pancakes with a, an orange syrup that I made myself and ice cream. And she got a real ice cream headache after that one. Mm. Mm. Mind you, it wasn't one. It was about four. <laughs> well, you're, just, you're supposed to drink a hot cup of tea while you're eating them. <laughs> Hang on, has somebody come in? Has Mick come in? Oh, Mick's here. Yep. Yeah, that's Mick Dews. Mick Dews is here. What your abrasives? They could go missing. Yeah, he, he says he's going to behave tonight, and, and he wants everybody to stop laughing. Well, after he, after all the shenanigans he had in the, in the Axminster video today, he gave, gave yeah, Mark a hard no. time. <laughs> gave Mark a hard time. All right. I, I am starting to be able to speed this up a little bit. We started about 500, but it's uh, I'm up closer, well, right at 1,000 now. Getting some of that weight off. And yeah, we've got a, a, a couple of the uh, pancakes coming in gerard has said pancake with sweet chestnut puree now that does sound absolutely uh, nice that does gerard i love sweet chestnut puree I and susie's same um, oh it, it is really nice ruby it really is and susie has put in pancakes with strawberry jam yeah i could live with that as well probably with some ice cream as well <laughs> My mother would be turning over in her grave if I suggested ice cream with pancakes. It's the warm and the cold. That's what it is. It, it tends to work. Sounds good to me. Yep. That's Kinda looking like, uh, pretty round already, Doug. It does. It does. It, it's pretty amazing. It's not. Let me turn that off. And while I, We still got flats all the way. You know, all the flats are still there. None of them have gone away, but they're getting smaller. Getting I think smaller. that inclusion is going to up that. that, up, that I think that stay. inclusion is, yeah, because that that is going to look pretty cool. That is. If and Matt Harbour has has joined us. Hi, Matt. Hey, Matt. Hey, hey Matt. Matt. All right, I want to give it a little more boost. And Mark has said, um, thanks to everyone that was watching the Axminster premiere earlier on. It was very, very good, Mark. Sure it was. It really was. It was instructional. It was humorous. You left mistakes in there, which is always good. And I hope everybody gets benefit from watching it. If they haven't seen it, um, you, uh, go across. You... Sorry, Ruby. Did you not see uh, Albert Dawson's name? Oh, I must have missed Al. Sorry, Al. Hey, Albert. And Gerard was saying whenever he goes to France, he brings back some tins of sweet chestnut puree. Next time I go to France, I'll have to remember to do that. Now, what we tend to get across here 
is we tend to get the um, certainly around Christmas time, we tend to get the whole um, the, the packs of uh, whole sweet chestnuts rather than having to roast your own. Um, and they can actually be made into a puree as well. Hmm. That's a tradition um, that didn't uh, come over this way. No, I mean, um, again, over here at Christmas time, Brussels sprouts tend to be a, a tradition at Christmas. And what I tend to do is mix the, the Brussels sprouts with chestnut and bacon. But that's just me. Um, Todd's asking, has anybody lost the video? Uh, no, Todd, it's still mm -hmm. on. Yeah, it's working fine here. And now Albert has said, I never thought a sphere can be turned this way. Pretty cool. That That's where I said, Al. I've, I've never seen this done before. Yeah, I had not either till I saw Clint at Word Dancers do it. And uh, it, it helped me. I'm telling you, that's, that's why I'm doing it today. It, it helped me that much. Um, Instead of starting with a column, a tube, whatever, not a tube because it's not hollow, um, but it, just a, a spindle, that's the word I'm looking for. Um, yeah. Instead of starting with a spindle and, you know, getting your center line and then making sure you're, uh, you know, getting that square, those square lines and everything, um, this just... This is just, it's, it's more intuitive. Um, you don't need a lot of measuring equipment. Um, <laughs> sorry, sorry, Doug, I was la laughing at the comment there. Mick has said that Wayne will do this on his next live only faster. Oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, he'll have the whole thing done in about 30 seconds. Then you'll have to come up with something else to turn to fill in the hour. Yeah, I know, I know. It's it's really annoying when that happens because I, I, I tend to get in the zone and then the next thing you know, it's only half past eight. <laughs> now, Zed says that he once turned a sphere by mounting his drill press over the lathe and using a hole saw with the drill bit removed. Yes, I've, 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 seen, I've, I've, done that, I've done that putting the whole saw just in a handheld uh, drill. Yep, mm -hmm. I've seen that done as well. Uh, Sue B is in, and she's had a comment on about uh, Brussels sprouts, that is. And she loves Brussels sprouts roasted with balsamic, bacon, and dried cranberries. There have been um, oh, a few oh, comments. Now you're talking there my have, language. Yeah, there have been a few comments about Brussels sprouts. Uh, some positive, some negative. One of those things that you either like them or you really don't. Um, yeah, I like them. It, um, I, I like especially them. Especially when you do something like bacon and cranberries or, um, you know, get dried cranberries and, and some balsamic vinegar. and um, Oh, my. <laughs> and, and roast it in the oven. They're just yeah. tremendous. But now, Andrew I, I, said, no, go on, go on, Doug. I was just going to say, uh, you know, if you don't like them, you don't like them. And I, you know, that's okay. There's some things that I don't like that a lot of people don't understand. Like I, I've never been able to eat tomatoes. Can't All stand right. them. Okay. Um, I don't understand it. My wife doesn't understand it. Um, but I just don't. I just don't like them. They're very, very acidic. Now Al wants to know if this is the way you turn the sphere you showed on Facebook. Yes. Yes. Exactly the same. There you go. Now, EGK is uh, put a comment in about my turning. Um, certainly, when I've got uh, earworms on. And it said it took them, this is the e-worms, it, it took them five <laughs> minutes last week to get my attention. Yeah. That, because that's what happens. I've, I've got the e-worms in the background uh, commenting on the chart and doing the chart, and I'm just in the zone turning. 
Mick says the only time he's seen you go slow was when you got the ball stuck on the worm screw. <laughs> we huffed and we puffed. <laughs> I don't yeah. think you're ever going to live that down, Wayne. That's, no, that's no, the, 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 like, I, I think I said a, a few weeks ago, the people who supplied the wood put a video out on that and concentrated on me trying to get the piece off the wood, off the, uh, off the chuck. Well, Mark says that talking of worm screws, he noticed that you left his live the other day just before he showed how to remove a blank from the screw. <laughs> oh, sorry about that, Mark. So it wasn't really intentional then. Glenn Tago had a, a spent a few minutes in one of his videos here recently on uh, the deal with that. He said... He would, and his solution makes sense to me. Run that, run that piece in there all the way, and then once you get it all the way up, back it off. Go about halfway off, and then put it back on again, and you won't have trouble. I'm not sure I fully believe it, but no. To tell you the thought. truth, what I, what I should have done is actually drill the hole a little bit bigger. Another uh, half a mil, if, if I'd used, I, I can't remember what size he used, I think it was 8 mil. If I'd used an 8.5 mil drill, I would have had no problems. But I yeah. didn't. You just made it too tight, that's all. Yeah, and it, again, it was, uh, it was a very, very uh, dense piece of wood and quite a small ball blank as well. All right. Got the flat spot off. That's, I've been working on that flat spot for a while. Now I got to get it round again. I've lost my round. See, now to me, I'm not, now I've seen people use um, a shadow board or a piece of cardboard cut, it, cut into a semicircle. Yeah, um, yeah. I've, I've, I've seen people using various things to actually get the spherical shape, but this is true freehand uh, turning of a sphere. Now, Rob says that he was promised professional demonstrators. Yeah, well, you had one, Rob. Mark was there. I, I guess I'll have to come over and help you out at uh, Harrogate then, Rob. <laughs> Now I'm seeing a lump right about there. It's not much of one. It'll come right off with a little shear scrape. And then it's coming along one. Quite, quite nicely rounded. It is. It's looking in a very good shape in the moment, I've got to say. It, it, well, yeah, it's. Um, you guys have turned spheres before, and, and you know, you get it to a certain point, then all of a sudden, all the all the uh, places that are not right they start becoming obvious. It's just a matter oh, of yappy's taking it in. easy. Hey, Yappy. Hey, Yappy. Hey, Yappy. Uh, Matt is saying, I missed the intro. Is this all being done by I? Uh, yes, it is, yes. Matt. Yes. To yes totally by... freehand. And we started off with it on the bias instead of straight up between centers yeah he started with a cube and he put the uh the corners of the cube into the drive in the uh live center all right all right we're getting close here i think it's time to start well first thing to do is turn it off and take a look at it that helps sometimes yeah, just to see where we are. And it's... Well, you've got the one spot on the left. Just below. Little, yeah, one on the other here. side, too. Yep, right there. Yep. I missed that one earlier. I was looking for it earlier. So I got to get that. But there's a, a little section here that's a little bit flat. I need to take a little here and a little there and get that off. Okay. Now, Andy says that Rob wants to see it sanded from a cube to a sphere. <laughs> have, have, have you got any 20 grit paper um no well 10 would work too 
Okay, the, the couple of other comments coming in. Gerard has um, just commented that they got a, a good surprise today. Our men's shed got a grant, and we're finally going to get the record power region laid. Oh, nice one, oh, Gerard. Great, that, that, Gerard. That's a nice yeah. hefty lead. Yes, you'll like and, it. Yeah, and Sue B is asking, Doug, do you need CA for that inclusion? Do I need it? No. I may I may put some in there. Um, I think if that were me, Doug, I would be using some two-part epoxy with some uh, acrylic paint mixed in for color. And Rob is asking, this is Rob from Copper Owl, is asking, do you have a template to check it against? Which is what I was talking about earlier on, a, a semicircle yeah. cut out of cardboard <laughs> or something like that. That would be an easy thing to do. Um, it'd be very easy. But no, I've done this entirely by eye. Um, one of the things that used to be talked about, and I've not heard anybody recently talking about it, but with Spears, getting a piece of... Uh, uh, PVC pipe, just a two-inch right. piece or so, a little piece of cut off, um, inch and a half, two inches in diameter. A, and, cur uh, a curtain, curtain ring will work for that too. Sure. And if the ring will sit flat all the way around, you know that you're round. Mm-hmm. The, the, the whole point of uh, this exercise uh, that Steve put out as a hashtag was to basically turn it a sphere freehand without any jigs. Now, th there might be a cheat or uh, something coming in, but it's nobody is using uh, an actual sphere jig to turn the spheres. Right. They are right. all done freehand. <laughs> I did, as you were saying that, I just happened to think, I wonder what Pete would do. <laughs> uh, Pete has a way of coming up with some interesting ideas on how to do some things. And stay he within does. The rules. He, uh, yes, he does. Well, um, he might not stay within them. But he probably bends them a little bit. Uh, no, that Rob, may be Rob, true. Rob says he made one, and Gerald says the sphere is looking good. Coming along. Are those handles so that you can uh, use it for rolling pastry? That's it. <laughs> that's as soon as I, would... I looked, I looked at him making those cuts. And that's what came to mind. That, that, that's something I had never even considered, Ruby. <laughs> I said earlier that was cheery. It's not. That's a piece of walnut. Sure as the world it is. Now, Clint, Clint has said, and this is going back to, uh, I think I mentioned earlier, using a shadow, uh, which you can do using a light from above with a, a piece of um, plain white paper underneath on the bed bars. Um, the shadow shows the shape. Um, the first one, I didn't trust what I was seeing. Now I've driven my wife crazy with all the spheres because the eel come out pretty fast. Yeah. Yeah, this one developed a lot quicker than my first one did. I think the first one now, I spent almost two hours on it. Andy, woodwork learner, has said, I'm sending a pic of a bowling ball. Is that cheating? Well, yes, yes. it is, because one, it's not a sphere. Because it did, bowling balls tend to be weighted at one side, so you actually get them to turn when you bowl them down the field. Mm -hmm. And Mick Jews has said, I have to do my free hand because I haven't got a jig. I'll have to try this method. Now, the, 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 like, I, like I said earlier on, Mick, this is the first time I've seen somebody do a cube and turn it up. The, the cube with the points in the headstock and tailstock to actually turn, turn the uh, the sphere. I've never and, seen that done before. And Lucy has joined us. Welcome, Lucy. Evening, Lucy. Hey, you, Lucy. Did you get your potato shopping done?
I'm not going to say in this. Hi, Chris, Chris Walters has this. joined us as well. Hi, you, Chris. Hey, Chris. I hope you finally got all your pens done, Chris. He had a commission for five pens to be done. All right. Oh, nice one. And Mick is, is telling you, Doug, to sand it like you stole it. That's right. Except that's the way Mick, Yeah, that's the way Mick does it because he usually does. He did. I'm gonna that. have to try I'm gonna have to try that technique the next time I'm somewhere they've got some uh, they've got some free sandpaper samples around. So uh, Lucy has said, back to you, Doug. Yes, she did get all the shopping done, which has only brought in the, the fridge stuff. Uh, she wanted to watch you. So why well, did you go out you shopping much. in the first place then? <laughs> and Mark says there's no such thing as free sandpaper. <laughs> Somebody paid for it. That's true. That's got a nice shape to it. It's, oh, Heather's it's pretty in. Close. It's pretty close. Hi, Heather. Yeah, welcome, Heather. Yeah, she's been she's been having trouble trying to get in a computer. Oh my goodness. All right. I'm afraid to rub that too hard because of that one bad spot. It's it's a little grabby still. It's sand it's sanding nice, but. I gotta turn that back on. Hope that's not too loud for you all. Chris, Can't hear said, a thing. Chris said he had a commission for ten pieces, five pens and five walls. Oh my goodness! That, yeah, I don't think he's got any of them done from a comment he made earlier. Before I go any further, I'm going to look at that. Yeah, it's pretty bad. It's pretty bad. So, no, see, see, I like that. I like it too, but it's, it's, um, these edges are so sharp, Wayne. I'm not going to, well, yes, I am. I'm going to fill it with some shavings and some CA. I'm, not, I'm probably not going to make them perfect by any means. But, and Mike's in from Dances with Oddvox. Hey, Mike. And Heather says she uh, bought a pen kit at Christmas because it was on sale and still hasn't made any yet. Oh, God. I, I bought uh, pen kits from uh, Taylor's Murfield uh, nearly two years ago. <laughs> it made a central. And, oh, uh, God, uh, yeah. And I still haven't even touched them yet. And Chris is saying that the bowls uh, he's commissioned are for his caregiver, and she doesn't know it yet. Okay. Yeah, when I was demonstrating on the weekend, the owner of the store had me uh, teach about five of his staff how to make pens. It was a good thing I had that many kits already uh, drilled out and ready to go. Yeah, yeah. Oh, Jimmy's in. Evening, Jimmy. JP. Uh, now, a, a, bit, a bit of advice. If you are going to use uh, CA glue, super glue, whatever you want to call it, um, it can actually stain the wood. Mm -hmm. Yes. So one of, one of the things, of the, two things you can do. Number one, Put sand and sealer on before you use the CA glue. Or the second thing you can do is actually use the CA glue before you do your final cut. Both right. of them, both of them will stop the staining on the wood. Yes. Yes. <laughs> Andy says he was asked to do four mice but at the rate his back is not certain itself it may take weeks 
I can, I can relate, Andy. My back's been spasming all day. Oh, dear. Nick says he got a boot full of free English oak today. Still very wet, but hey, I like wet turning. Yeah, then Jamie said, oh, uh, uh, typical Jamie, oh, great. Wayne specializes in ring, in rings, and Doug specializes in balls. <laughs> Cheers, Jamie. You're all hot, mate. Absolutely, absolutely. Let's put a little accelerator on that. So I still want to spray just a little bit. Now... No, I'm not going to specialize in these things. It's not, they're fun once or twice. <laughs> um, they're to me, they're kind of like mushrooms. Some people want them just to have them sitting around, but they're not. Uh, they're not really. Uh, What's the word? They're not commercially viable. Hmm. Well, you know. And Andy is and asking you, Wayne, how your shop is with all this rain you're getting. Well, luckily enough, Andy, um, we we have been on a, a flood warning for the past three days, I think. Uh, but we, we are not getting a hell of a lot of rain up here, to tell you the truth. It, it, the weather has not been bad. The workshop is dry but cold because I still haven't sorted the heating out, but that's by the by. Um, so, yeah, everything's fine up here at the moment. Thanks for asking, Andy. Much better, much better. And Matt says the last two spears he made have sold. Of course, they were highly embellished. You'll have to mm -hmm. tell us how you embellished them, Matt. What I found with spheres, and, and, and I have done a fair amount, is that you stick a bunch of them on a stand of various sizes, and they tend to go quite well, to tell you the truth. Uh, Coloured ones more than, um, than, than plain ones, unless I'm using the likes of Spalted Beach. If I'm using the likes of Spalted Beach, they will just sell. No problem whatsoever. Hmm, that's interesting. And um, Heather has said she's been off work since December the 24th when she threw, threw her back out. Supposed to go back next week, but not sure if her back is ready for us. That's sad to hear, Heather. I hate to hear that. I thought you were doing better. realized I had a couple bad spots. This center is still the, Mr. The G's half just come in. Hey, Mr. Hi, Mr. G. G. Good place right there. Now, Matt has said embellished uh, to answer your question, I think, Ruby. On one, he used a stone spray. That can be quite effective. And then he made holes to look like craters with their uh, spray burns. Hmm. Not sure oh. what not sure what he meant by that. I guess he'll have to explain that little bit of embellishment a little further. Matt is Matt does a good job of, of embellishing in several ways, so you're never quite sure. Whether it's a Josonia or the uh, chameleon flakes and powders or dot painting, there's still a little flat area right there, and it looks like it's humped up here and here. That's better. Yeah, that's better. Yep. 
Yeah, I'm not. I still don't know what I was doing wrong with the first two or three that I tried that were so terrible. Um, but I, I, one of the things I've discovered, at least for myself, is that once I get the basic sphere turned, take my time, look at it, spend some time looking, and, and just what what needs to go away. Um, I've got a potter friend, his whole, he, he and I look at our work in totally different ways. And we sat and talked about it for a couple of hours one night. He, he uh, simply reshapes or adds more clay to, to the piece he's working on. Where I've got a set amount and once I take it off, it doesn't go back on. So all I'm doing is removing. Yep. Well, it definitely looks right. <laughs> it's it's been make, all the time. Yeah. Now, Mike from Dances with the Aardvarks has said, I wish I'd made time to make a sphere. Um, mine might be a week or so late. Now, I don't know if you've seen Mike's post, but at the moment, he is making a 10 centric uh, if that's the right term, uh, off-centered goblet with captive rings is. as well. And it is cool. <laughs> it no, is I can't cool. say I've seen it yet. Oh, man. Oh, the, the stuff that, that Mike comes up with is totally out there. It really is. And it is very, very good. And he tends to make a lot of the tooling he needs uh -huh. uh, to actually do these things as well. Now, where you were just using your, uh, your gouge, Walt says he tends to use his skew. Sure. Probably on sure. its side. Yeah. yeah. Uh, a, a skew would work very nicely if you're very adept at it. I am not. Uh, I can use my and, skew. And the, the other thing is, with this particular piece, you might have problems with the skew with that um, inclusion that you've got. Yeah. Yeah. Just using it as a scraper, you could do that without any problem. Um. I don't know. I've forgotten my my bowl gal just like my right hand. Um, now, Matt has said um, about the embellishment uh, on one of the other spheres he did. He divided it into quarters, then did a, a little bit different decorations in each one, uh, using wood burning or carving, then ten tested the intrinsic color dyes from the sample kit. Oh, yeah, he. he he sent me a, photos of them, and uh, they do look exceptionally good. There you go. And Mark, Mark has said uh, that looks spot on, Doug. It's getting there. Uh, getting there. Dale from Old Man River has said that his back now limits his shop time to four hours a day, if he's lucky to make it that long. Yeah. Matt's going to send you a, a picture, Ruby. I, I got the picture and it looks really good. Cool. Grand. I'm interested to uh, see. J Jimmy is, Jimmy's just sent you a, um, a super chat for one in oh, for sand in that sphere. <laughs> Help support Rob. <coughs> I'm going to be interested to see what this measures at the end. Um, we started off five, five and a quarter inch cube. I'm going to guess this is going to be down close to four, four and a half, maybe. That's as far as I'm going to go right now. I'm going to get this thing turned. Go the other direction. Ah. Oh. That's not too bad. That's not too bad. Now something will pop up as I'm as I'm uh, going this, you know, changing the poles on this. Uh, there will be something that doesn't. It'll, it'll come out whoppity somehow, and I'll have to fix it. That's okay. Now, Wayne commented earlier that... Did Mark's phone uh, just come in? Thanks. I think, I think, 
I think Mark's one just came in. Okay. Um, you know, some might consider this jig. It's really their chucks, technically. Um, and if this is cheating, sorry, I'm cheating, I guess. But unless you're going to leave a stub on one end. Now, like Mike, it, Mike, Mike is asking, Doug, is that a PSI, Chuck? A what? PSI, Chuck. It's, I'm not understanding. That looks Nova like, a, that looks like a one-way. No, this it, is a Nova. Oh, yeah, okay. it, it it's one of the earlier um, mm -hmm. scroll chucks that that has two bars, yes. uh, rather rather than a key. Now, yep. Doug, before turning that, I would tend to have taken a saw and cut those stubs shorter. Sure, sure, that's that would be a good way of doing it, but they're pretty small. As long as I don't get overly aggressive. What did that? So, I'm just curious what happened there. One of them blew off. Oh, it broke off. No problem. Oh, that helps. I took one. I'm glad I had so my So Mark just on. sent me a picture of something he's working on. Cheers, Mark. I'll come on, on that uh, a bit later on. Well, Susie, now, we'll go ahead. Susan. Sorry, Ward Wills. <laughs> right, go ahead, Ruby. Mark. Go on. Go, you no, go. go on, Ruby. No, nope, you go. First. No, you go. Okay. Ward Wilson is asking, uh, why not just saw them off, the, the end pieces? Because I have to walk to the other end of the shop. <laughs> and I'll have these done by the time I could have walked down there, got them done and come back, got it back. There you the go, truck. Ward. It's a it's a logistical issue. <laughs> yeah, you can call it that. <laughs> what what do we say? Uh, uh, too lazy to do it. <laughs> <laughs> All right, and they are slightly off center from each other. I'm not worried about that even. But I can see now the... looking at that um, the sphere in the two uh, cup chucks. You that, that is pretty much on center, and once you finish that ghosting, that should be just about a perfect sphere. It's pretty close, it's off a little bit. Um, I can hear it and feel it, it's, it's got a little bumpiness to it. Some of that is those nubs that I'm still taking off, but yeah, it's, it's pretty close, Wayne. It, it is pretty close. I want to take a look. Yeah, I still got a nub there. The other one, ah, it's still there too. Okay. I didn't think over there as much. They are. We'll take a serious cut on them. Now, Gerard says that I should have let you go first and said age before beauty. Except, as I recall, <laughs> Wayne, I'm older than you are. Uh, uh, not by much, though, Ruby. Not by much. <laughs> Right, I'm, I'm going to have to drop out for just a couple of minutes. I will be back shortly. All right, sir. All right, where are we on those nubs? Still there. Okay. Still there. So... Thank you, Andy. He says, I don't look that old. <laughs> and Chris, I have turned a letter opener, both one that's part of a kit and one that's just all entirely wood. Letter openers are... are Kind of interesting, aren't they? 
Yes. Oh, but God. Let's see. I'm going to mark this so I can well, see the, it. The one, the one I did entirely out of wood, I sharpened the blade part much the way I did the, uh, the two swords that I made so that they're angled like a knife, a uh, knife or a sword blade would be. Uh -huh. And I'll tell, tell you, I did it out of hard maple, and it really does open letters extremely well. I bet. I bet it does. All right. If I can see that line. Okay, now I know where my borders are, sort of, more or less. I'm getting a pretty good collection of pencils that need to be sharpened. Okay, now well, I I found the SC2 Chuck is really good for sharpening pencils. Yeah, that's what you said the other day. Yeah, yeah, I had those pastel pencils and I just couldn't sharpen them with a regular uh, pencil sharpener, so I stuck them in the Chuck and took my skew and sharpened them right up. And I'll tell you, it did a great job. Yeah, I did. Where you'd be able to, to turn that detail and that squirrel like that, that was phenomenal. Yeah, it was it made it made a big difference. All right, maybe I got those nubs off. If I did, ah, oh, it's still there. Matt says he uh, he made his uh, letter opener out of hard maple and it worked really well as well. You're getting some lovely cuts there, uh, Doug. You're really riding the bevel well. Um, I'm trying to. I, I don't want to take a whole lot of wood off. I just want to clean off those nubs. And, uh, yeah, by by staying on the bevel as much as possible. That's an interesting little, oh, that's on that back side of that nub. It's still there. Now, um, Sue, Sue said that that would be a good lesson um, good lesson in pencil sharpening. Yeah. Do, do a live on that. <laughs> pencil sharpening. William, I'll Kenny, tell you. William Kenny has joined us. Welcome, William. Hey, hey William. William. I, I think one, one of the best pencil sharpening little videos, I can't remember if he put it out as a short, was um, Jamie. Jamie did a, um, a, a little video on pencil sharpening. Now, there's been a few comments in about um, letter openers, and I don't know, since I was away, I don't know if they were talking about kits for let, letter openers or just turn the, turning and uh, sanding the, oh. the letter openers out of wood. Both. Oh. Yeah, Ruby's done them both ways. Yeah, because I, I think... Um, Turning a letter opener and using just wood for the letter opener looks a hell of a lot better than having a metal insert. Yeah, Jimmy's talking about the pencil sharpening. Uh, lol, he did. He did it on the lathe at 1,000 RPM. It, it, does, it does work really well. I bet. I guess Jamie used a, green rolls in. Jamie, you probably used a, a easy wood rougher, didn't you? The full size or maybe even the pro size? Oh, I think he would have used the finisher for that. <laughs> I, I can't actually remember to tell you the truth. What I don't do know that I saw that one. It's it's uh fun to go back and, and watch some of the older videos from folks. I can't uh, tell you the truth. I can't remember if he actually had a, a pencil sharpener in the headstock and a, a pencil in the tail stock. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Just turned it 90 degrees. Yeah, 
Yeah, the, Jimmy said it was a, a pencil sharpener with a drill attachment that he put into the chuck. Ah, uh -huh, okay. <laughs> it was pretty cool, though. There was, you know, there was, um, it was good for a laugh. Yeah. Steampunk pencil sharpening. <laughs> Trying to see why. Oh, I know what it is. This uh, this live center insert. I, I started th trying to thread it, and I didn't get it threaded properly. So now it it wants to move, and when it does, it gets off off kilter just a hair. Still off, but it'll be okay. It'll be okay. Mick says he uses his joinery chisels to sharpen his pencils. Why well, <laughs> is he almost like using a skew? I'm surprised he doesn't use a piece of paper. He's got enough of it. <laughs> yeah, I hear this Clings 440 grit does a real good job on sharpening pencils. No, those pastel pencils I was using, I hate to say it, but 40 grit would be too coarse for them. <laughs> yeah, it would have eaten it up, wouldn't it? Well, certain colors, depending on the pigment used to make them, are extremely soft. They're, uh -huh. they're, they're like chalk that you used to write on the chalkboard with. Jimmy said that uh, Andrew AGK reminds him of an IKEA pencil. Now, if anybody has gone to IKEA, <laughs> you you get the really short pen pencils to write your orders down on. Oh. So they are short and never got any lead in. <laughs> and Lucy says that your uh, your spear makes her think of a Skittles ball. Yeah. Yeah, Mark knows about those. He he does those. Oh yes, he they definitely does. They have to be pretty exact. Those got to be pretty exact. Now Matt says he has pocket knives, y'all. He can sharpen a pencil with those before you can even mount it in the lathe. Uh, these pencils, Matt, you wouldn't be able to. I hate to tell you that. Oh, go. Rob says he has a customer who has a belt sander purely for sharpening chalk. Okay. Interesting. There you go. Now, there are people out there, and, and I've seen them in a couple of magazines, but there are folks out there who have come up with um, servo motors and whatnot and put, put four, you know, uh, like four corners of a square to do this kind of thing. You just put this on, onto that gizmo and and let it run for an hour, come back, change your sandpaper grit. Um, you know, it, that's all fine and dandy, and you get a perfect sphere that way. But you know what? That takes the, to me, that takes some of the handwork out of it. I'm not saying they're wrong to do that. I'm just saying that's a lot of work to get something that's partly done by hand, but partly done by machine. This is coming along. I'll switch out. We're up to 180 now. Let's see, I'm going to reverse this as well. I've been doing everything forward now reverse for a minute Rob says he knows what you mean Doug he enjoyed handcrafting his sphere yeah yeah golly I Just guess it's been yeah. go ahead Wayne. just to let everybody know that Rob actually 3D printed his sphere <laughs> he, he did put it inside the cube, mind. Yeah, yeah, I saw that, yeah. Uh, 
And Andy yeah. has said uh, if he wants to sharpen a pencil, he just takes one of the knives out from his back. <laughs> All right, where did that fly? And Andy says that Wayne, you had to nap a knife before you could sharpen yours. <laughs> oh God! I remember those days, don't you, Wayne? I do. Yes, I do. In fact, beside me, which I've just picked up, is um um. A, not a replica. It's made by a different firm from the the Swiss Army knives. You know, a multifunction knife, right? Mm -hmm. with, which which I carry with me all the time because it's absolutely brilliant. Um, I sharpen the blades all the time. Um, and uh, the if anybody has a chance to get a Swiss Army knife, get a Swiss Army knife because they are absolutely brilliant uh, as a utility knife in the workshop. <laughs> that went straight down my dust extractor and it's not even on sue is asking doug when you reverse direction did you drop down a few grits i went down one grit yeah i went from 120 to 180 when i reversed There's a couple of comments coming in that uh, people won't understand un unless you've been in the know. So I'll not bother mentioning them. <laughs> Andy says that Openall made an anniversary napped flint knife. He saw it on holiday in France but couldn't afford it. That would be quite yeah. interesting. They make excellent knives. Yeah, the, the the thing is that a, a lot of these knives, really, really well-made knives from um, well-known, um, or certainly well-known in their own country, they, they tend to be on the expensive side. Oh. I was actually lucky enough, when, when I was in the army in Germany, um, I spent some time as a mechanic for the military police. And they used to con confiscate a hell of a lot of stuff, uh, including a lot of knives. And then they used to bring it over to me, working in the garage, to actually destroy them. Oh. Needless to say, a few of them didn't get destroyed. Oh. <laughs> Somehow they in, fell in your pocket. That would be hard, hard yeah, uh, uh, yeah in, including a couple of Swiss Army knives. Sure. I'm going to I'm going to rework this this uh, live center cup if I'm going to do any more of these. Um, in fact, if I'm going to do too many more, I'm going to order some of the chucks from Rubber Chucky because uh, they will be dead on then every time. Yeah, All Andy right. Woodwork Learner has said. Yeah, Andy Woodwork Learner has said that. Um, oh, where's it going? that I got my first uh, Swiss Army knife, the original Swiss Army knife with flint blades. <laughs> <laughs> Why does everybody think I'm so old? Because you're just a little younger than I am. That's why. Oh, and they God. know I'm old. Yeah, and then Mark, Mark said, we had his bayonet from his first musket when he was in the Army. Oh, cheers, Mark. I'll have words with you later. I'm going to, where that left a little bit of a ring on that last time around, I'm going to give it just a little hand, hand sanding. I'll back that out just a hair. Now, there. Rob from Klingspore has said, Wayne will know one of the sharpest things that he has known was the small tin opener that they used to put in army ration packs. Rob, I have got two of them in my kitchen drawer. And I, I use at least one of them, not necessarily daily, but every week to open tins. I still use that because it's a brilliant tool. We've we've had them. Um, don't know if I still have one around or not, but yeah, I think they're great. That was no, just wait. a little bit, a little bit longer that way than it is that way. But unless it's 
in your hand, it's going to be hard to tell. Let's see. Let's get that shook up. Good. Now, Wayne, Andy says that you're not old. You're just seasoned. <laughs> yeah, well, well seasoned. Not necessarily air dried, but certainly well seasoned. It takes it takes a lot of, lot of alcohol to season somebody like me. <laughs> uh, oh mercy! <laughs> oh boy, that sure brought the color up. Wow! Yes, it does. Yes, it does. Not only that, you're also getting to uh, lubricate your hands quite nicely. They won't be That's dry right. at all. That's exactly right. I'm still picking up a now, little bit of dust out of this crack. Dill has said because I because I look older than Ruby. Well, of course I do. That's only because your beard grew in fuller than mine did. <laughs> <laughs> that right. does that does look great, Doug. Let's give a little wipe with some paper towel here. There we go. There we go. As Andy points out, this is where oiling your ball in public doesn't get you arrested. Yes, yes. Yeah, and, and and Mark's put in, when you look older than some mountains. Hey, what is this, Mark? I give you lovely comments on your on your video from the day, and I'm getting this back. We are definitely gonna have words. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that was that that really was pretty cruel. There we go. Probably true, but still cruel. There he is. Well, come on, sit still. There we go. Couple of spheres, hand turned, started on the bias instead of end to end. Um, just something different. For me, it makes a difference in being able to get it done. Um, maybe it'll help, you know, if you're having trouble with spheres, this might be something that'll help you. Um, where did that piece go? There it is. So just that to- a, That was a good, unique way of uh, starting out, Doug. Yeah, it's, it's just, it's different. We don't, it's something I have not seen until I saw Clint do it uh, just the other day. And uh, it, it helped me visually but i think uh, just that method just helps me with the whole starting process um can i can i just say that jamie's putting another super chat in oh thank you jamie thank you appreciate that it helps 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 that'll buy mm -hmm. me some more uh clings pour sanding pa sanding uh paper or uh some intrinsic colors or something so thank you. <laughs> You're getting a, a, a lot of nice comments in here. And um, Alice said he would not have believed this could be done. I haven't seen it. Uh, really cool. Uh, yeah, and like I said at the, at the beginning of the video, I have never seen um, a sphere turned w with a cube um, yeah, from the, way, yeah. the, yeah, turning that way. Um, and Rob says that a few more, uh, Doug, and you can make your own planetary. There you go. Yeah. Let me just grab this right here just to, so for a talking point. But yeah, usually they start, you start with that in between centers. Center here, center there. You make a center line and then you measure, measure this diameter. And that center line goes halfway in between. Then you do the 45s and the 22 and a half. And, uh, but this way, right. we just we started as a cube. If I move that just a little bit, we started yeah. as a cube like that, corner to corner on the bias. Now, and, uh, another, couple, an, another couple of uh, comments coming in, Doug. Um, Zed is, uh, said, now reverse it and turn a cube from a sphere. Okay. That's, that's already easier. been done. Yeah, that's already <laughs> been done. Steve Trudell has done that a couple of few times. Yeah. Uh, he, he, I think he did it on a, a, a live on uh, Wood Turners Worldwide group uh, a couple of few weeks ago. Andrew wants to know what size it is. Ah, thank you for asking. 
roughly that is four and a quarter. That's inches. Four and a yes. And it started out at five and a quarter. So we lost about an inch by taking that cube on the bias, taking it down to round in all directions. So uh, um, that doesn't surprise me. I, I, if it had gone down below four, I would not have been surprised. But I, yeah. So it's that roughly cedar about wood. 10 centimeters. Yeah, around yes, the boat. Yes, yes, yes. Um, uh, lo lots of these. Yeah, lots of nice comments coming through, Doug. Uh, Doug. Oh, good. Good. Yeah, Ward Thank says you. that you're a well-rounded individual, Doug. <laughs> well, this ball is anyway. Oh, no wonder. <laughs> I, was, I was trying to stand this ball up on this cup chuck, but the tenon's got a tenon on the bottom end of it. It wouldn't stand up. <laughs> now, Rob, Rob from Klingspor said, could you stick some ears on it? so it could be made into a space hopper for two of my friends <laughs> and i think I, I think those two friends are uh lucy and andrew from gk let's see if i take a couple of uh clings poor sanding disc and i put them <laughs> oh there you go <laughs> yeah that works well if you hadn't filled in those cracks you could have stuck them right in the cracks mm -hmm. <laughs> well they're a little uh well yeah it's too i filled them in too far to do that anyway but even the that nasty place and wayne was talking about it how nice it looked and it, it even still looks nice and that's a just a big ugly knot that had started to break away um so but it's it's fine it's it's gonna be fine this one uh, this cedar piece had a rotten, rotten branch in it. That was a, a branch inclusion that had rotted inside the tree. Um, but they come out nice. And that little bit of uh, oil rubbed in, uh, once that dries a little bit, it'll, it'll, the finish will look more like the cedar. So there you have the two together. No, they came out very nice, Doug. I'm, I'm excited about this. Uh, thanks again to clint for his example it was fun <laughs> and, and uh, that's it that's it <clears throat> so i'll be sending these pictures on to steve and that'll be my my hashtag entry uh ruby well, you al, just gotta... al, al wants to know if you're going to hollow a moat now no no <laughs> no <laughs> um if i could get my vacuum on on this lathe i might do that um that might be a fun project to do. Just hold it on with a vacuum chuck and hollow it out. Um, that'd be fun. That'd be fun. But I'm not going to. <laughs> I will show them tonight, Al. So uh, it'll be there. That's all for me today. It's been a good time. Hour and 15 minutes in. We're done. We've been chatting a while, around for a while here. So it's been great. Uh, thanks to JP and the Super Chats. Uh, uh, Wayne, thank you for coming in. Ruby as well. You guys, Thank I know you, you have it. It's a lot of fun. Uh, Mark's in the background. He's had a, a busy couple of days here. So, uh, Mark, you get better too. And uh, with that, we'll be, see, uh, let's see, Wayne, are you on tomorrow night? I am on tomorrow night. I haven't okay. set it up yet. Um, okay. uh, am I going to turn this for you? I'm not sure. We'll, we'll have to wait and see. And don't forget, Worldwide Wood Turners is on tomorrow night. Yeah, Worldwide Wood Turners is on UK time tomorrow night at uh, midnight. Mm -hmm. I can still Eastern. never work back. Eastern. <laughs> Six o'clock Eastern, seven o'clock Central time. And we go for uh, three hours or so, three, three and a half. And uh, you come in when you can, go out when you need to. Not a problem. So uh, don't know who the demonstrator is. Uh, it's usually... Usually pretty good. Uh, yes, I would agree with that. Yeah, I've, I've got to say, if I am demonstrating on Worldwide Wood Turners, it tends to be fairly short. <laughs> <laughs> Nobody would slow you down, huh? <laughs> that's, because, that's because you don't have your backup staff earworming for you. That, his earworms are specially trained to slow him down. 
Uh, they come up with some crazy questions sometimes just to slow him down. Oh, done the just. Done, done the, <laughs> and that will happen again tomorrow night. Mark like, won't uh, be with us. Um, uh, now, Mark won't be with us tomorrow night. It will be the, the usual crew of uh, Jamie, Andrew from AGK, and Shug. Yeah. They, they will be my E-worms tomorrow night. Wayne will be spraying some of this on a piece. And somebody will say, and what is that, Wayne? And he'll say, conversation starter. And then conversation they'll say, starter. and what does that do? Starts conversations. <laughs> there we Mar go. Marcus said, happy Valentine's for tomorrow, folks. And happy Valentine's to, to you as well, Mark. Oh, thanks, Mark. Um, I'm, 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 I take it I'm, I'm expecting the flowers before uh, 12 noon. <laughs> <laughs> Heck, I'd, I'd be happy if I got any before supper time. There you go. And the chocolates too. You can't forget those. For those uh, in the just, uh, just the flowers are enough. I'm, I'm anybody not anybody along the folks along the Gulf Coast of the U.S. Uh, happy Fat Tuesday to you all. Uh, heading into Ash Wednesday tomorrow as we start Lent. So uh, it's been a good day. Hope everybody's had a good time. <clears throat> Maybe you've seen something that intrigued you a little bit or entertained you, uh, whatever it might be. Let me get that down so you can see it just a little bit. Um, so anyway, we'll see you again next week. And until then, hope you're able to. Oh, he buggered off. He hit the button, Ruby. And he left me holding the bag. He hit the button. What's he like? Okay, uh, let me see it. Good night, everyone. It was very nice for you to, to be here. It's very much appreciated. Oh, hang on, he's back. I'm back. I hit the wrong button on the mouse again. <laughs> Just wanted to say bye, and we're going to say, all of us are going to say bye, and I'm going to end the session. Bye-bye. Good bye -bye. night. Happy Valentine's. Uh